Hi, huh, greetings, true believers. Well, our look at phase four of the MCU now continues on with Spider-Man No Way Home. After Quentin, Breck, after Quentin Beck frames Peter Parker for his murder and reveals Parker's identity as Spider-Man, Parker, his girlfriend MJ, MJ <coughs> his girlfriend Michelle, MJ Jones Watson, best friend Ned Leeds, and Aunt May are interrogated by the Department of Damage Control. Laura Matt Murdock gets, Peter, gets Parker's charges dropped, but the group grapples with negative publicity. After Parker, MJ, and Ned's MIT applications are rejected, Parker goes to the New York Sanctum to ask, to ask Stephen Strange for help. Strange starts casting spell to make everyone forget Parker's Spider-Man, but his corrupt when Parker repeatedly requests alterations so his loved ones retain their memories, ultimately causing Strange to contain the spell to stop it. At Strange's suggestion, Parker tries to convince an MIT administrator to reconsider the applications of MJ and Ned, but is attacked by Otto Octavius. Octavius rips nanotechnology from Parker's iron spider suit, which bonds with its mechanical tentacles and allows Parker to control them. As Norman Osborn arrives and attacks, Strange teleports Parker back to the Sanctum and locks Octavius in a cell next to Kirk Connors. Strange, Strange explains that the spell corrupt that the corrupted spell some appeal from other universes within the multiverse who know Spider-Man's identity. He orders Parker, MJ, and Ned to find and capture them. The location retrieve Max Steele and Flint Marco at a military research facility. Osborne reclaims control of himself, <coughs> control of himself from his split green goblin personality and destroys the goblin mask. <clears throat> he goes to a feast building where May comforts him before Parker retrieves him. While discussing their battles with Spider-Man, Osborn, Octavius, and Dylan realize they were pulled from the universes just before their deaths. Strange prepares to reverse the contained spell and send the villains back to their respective universes, but Parker argues they should first cure the villains of the insanity that will lead to their deaths, to possibly change their fates upon their return. When Strange refuses, Parker steals the spell, traps Strange in the mirror dimension, and, with May, takes the villains to Happy Hogan's apartment, where he uses Stark Industries technology to cure Octavius. Before Parker can cure anyone else, his spider sense goes off. He then realizes that the goblin persona is retaking control of Osborne, who convinces the uncured villains to betray Parker. As Dylan and Marco and Connors escape, the goblin fatally injures May. Before she dies, May tells Parker that with great power, there must also come great responsibility. Ned discovers he can create portals using Strange's sling ring, which he and MJ use to try to locate Parker. They set find alternate versions of Parker from the villains' universes, who were also summoned by Strange's spell, who were nicknamed Peter II and Peter III. The group finds this universe's Parker, nicknamed Peter I, who is ready to give up and send the villains home to die. The alternate Parker share stories of losing loved ones and encourage Peter I to fight in May's honor, and three Parkers develop cures for the villains. The group blur Dylan, Marco, and Connors to the Statue of Liberty. Peter and Peter to cure, Mar cure, cure Connors and Marco, while Octavius, helps, or, while Octavius arrives to help cure Dylan, and that frees Strange from the mirror dimension. The goblin appears and leashes the contained spell, which breaks apart the barriers between universes, pulling in countless others who know Parker's identity. Strange attempts to hold them off while an enraged Peter one tries to kill the goblin. Peter two stops him but gets stabbed by the goblin. Peter 3 helps Peter 1 inject the goblin with his cure, restoring Osborne's sanity. Peter 1 realizes that the only way to protect the multiverse is to erase himself from everyone's memory and request Strange to do so, while promising MJ and Ned that he will find them again. Strange reluctantly casts a spell and returns everyone to their respective universes, including Eddie Brock, who only leaves behind, leaves behind a piece of the Venom symbiote. Two weeks later, Parker visits MJ to reduce himself to her and Ned, but he decides against it. While mourning at May's grave, he has a conversation with Hogan and, and is inspired to carry on, making a new suit and resuming his vigilanteism. Aww. So let's take a look at the production of this movie, beginning with the development. During production on Spider-Man Homecoming, two sequels were planned by Marvel Studios and Sony Pictures. In June 2017, Star Tom Holland explained that each film take place during a different year of high school for Peter Parker slash Spider-Man, with the third being said during the character's senior year. Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige noted in July 19 that the third film would feature a Peter Parker story that has never been done before on film, due to the end of the second film, Spider-Man Far From Home, which publicly reveals that Parker is Spider-Man. Development on the third and fourth MCU Spider-Man films have begun, have begun by August 2019, 
with Sony hoping Holland and director John Watts would return for both. Holland was contracted to return for one more film, while Watts had completed his two-film deal and would need to sign on for any more films. By then, Marvel Studios and its parent company, the Walt Disney Studios, had spent several months discussing expanding their deal with Sony. The existing deal had Marvel and Feige produce the Spider-Man films for Sony and receive 5% of their revenue. Sony wanted to expand the deal to include more films while keeping the same terms as the original agreement. Disney expressed concern with Feige's workload producing the Marvel Cinematic Universe franchise already and asked for a 25-50% to 50 stake in any future films Feige produced for Sony. Unable to come to an, to an agreement, <clears throat> Sony announced it would be moving forward to the next Spider-Man film without Feige or Marvel's involvement. Their statement acknowledged that this could change in the future, thanks to Feige for his work on the first two films, and said appreciate the path Feige has helped to put us on, which we will continue. Chris McKenna and Eric Somers were writing screenplay for the, for the third film by the time of Sony's announcement, after also doing so for Far From Home. But Watts received, was receiving offers for large films or other studios instead of returning to the franchise, including potentially working on a different property for Marvel Studios and Feige. In September 2019, Sony Pictures Entertainment Chairman Tony Fisicuera said that for the moment the door is closed on Spider-Man returning to the MCU, and confirmed that the character will be integrated with Sony's own which was in his own shared universe. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Sony's Spider-Man universe moving forward. Responding to the backlash from fans following the announcement, Mr. Kiara added that the Marvel people are, are terrific people. We have a great respect for them. On the other hand, we have some pretty, pr pretty terrific people of our own. Feige didn't do all the work. We're pretty capable of doing what we have to do here. However, after this fan reaction continued at Disney's biennial convention at D23, and at the urging of Holland, who personally spoke to Disney CEO Bob Iger and Sony Pictures Motion Group, Motion Picture Group Chairman Tim Rothman, the companies returned to negotiations. Sony and Disney announced a new agreement at the end of September, which would allow Marvel Studios and Feige to produce another Spider-Man MCU film for Sony with Amy Pascal, scheduled for July 16, 2021. Disney was, Disney was reportedly co-financing 25% of the film in exchange for 25% of its profits while retaining the character's merchandising rights. Feige said he was thrilled that the character would remain in the MCU and said, All of us in Marvel Studios are very excited to keep are very excited to get to keep working on the franchise. The agreement also allowed a Holland Spider-Man to appear in a future Marvel Studios film as well as crossing over to, to Sony's own shared universe. The latter interaction described as a call and as a call and answer between the two franchises as acknowledged details between the two and what will loosely be described as a shared detailed universe. So I described their previous films with the Marvel Studios as a great collaboration and said our mutual desire to continue was equal to to that of many, to that of the many fans. At the time of the new agreement, Watts was in final negotiations to direct the film. Discussing the new deal in October I contributed to the efforts of Holland as well as the fan response to the end of the original deal. He felt that both Sony and Disney had initially forgotten that there are other people actually matter while they were negotiating. Rothman said the deal was a win-win, a win for Sony, a win for Disney, a win-win-win, a win for Sony, a win for Disney, and a win for the fans. He felt the initial reports and negotiations did not necessarily line up with the actual discussions that were taking place, and said the final deal would have eventuated without the reports and fan, dis and fan discourse. Zendaya was confirmed to be returning, was confirmed to be reprising her role as MJ from the previous films in the sequel. And now on to pre-production. McKenna and Summers began working on the script in earnest by December 2019. They considered featuring Craven the Hunter as the film's main antagonist, an idea that Watts had expressed interest in and in pitched to Holland, but were training towards a story idea similar to It's a Wonderful Life which Parker makes a wish regarding his now public identity. The idea that idea introduced Dr. Stephen Strange to the story, and the duo began explore, exploring the idea of the multiverse and potential revisiting characters from past Spider-Man films. Initially, they thought this would just be a tease for fans, but then we decided to fully integrate the past characters into the plot. Summer said, quote, Once it was collected, we decided that we were going to take this swing. We had to commit what we had to do what was right for the we had to commit, and we had to do what was right for the story, end quote. 
The actor basically wrote for other characters who wanted in the film before those actors were confirming were confirmed to be returning. Initial drafts of the film included every major character from past Spider-Man films returning. But this was narrowed down because they felt because the pair felt they had been off more than they could chew. The duo worked hard to prevent the film from being just a bunch of fan service by using re the returning character to help tell Peter Parker's story instead of just creating curtain calls for everybody. Excuse me. Norman Osborn slash Green Goblin from Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy was not the main villain of the film in the first version of the script, despite still appearing as an antagonist. After the film lost other characters, McKenna Summers concluded that the Green Goblin had to be the main villain and rewrote the script to give him a second chance to replicate his actions as Spider-Man, but in a darker way related to Holland's version of Spider-Man. American Chavez had been considered to appear in the film at one point to serve one point to serve in the Sorcerer's Apprentice type role that eventually became part of Ned Leeds' role in the film. She eventually went on to appear in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. By the end of 2019, filming was expected to begin in mid-2020. In April 2020, Sony rescheduled No Way Home's release date to November 5th, 2021, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Although the film was originally meant to be set after the events of Multiverse of Madness, release date changes meant No Way Home would be released first First, which meant aspects of the plot had to be rewritten, including Strange no longer no longer having first-hand knowledge of the multiverse. But Kenneth felt this made it even more frightening to start fooling around with these things because it's the fear of the unknown. In June, Marissa to make confirmed that she would return as May Parker along with Watts as director. She was with the May's work as the community organizer would be featured in the film. Also in June, Charlie Cox, who played Matt Murdock slash Daredevil in Marvel, Marvel Television's Netflix series was contacted by Feige about reprising his role in the Quinn Marvel Studios project, project starting with appearances in No Way Home and the Disney Plus series She Hulk Attorney at Law. The next month, Holland's production was planned to take place from late 2020 to February 2021, and Sony shifted the film's release date to December 17, 2021. Tony Revolori was also confirmed to be reprising his role as Flash Thompson. In early October, Jacob Adelon and Benedict Cumberbatch were set to reprise at their MC roles of Ned Leeds and Strange, while Jimmy Fox was set to return as Max Still as Max Still from Slash Electro from Mark Webb's The Amazing Spider-Man 2, with filming beginning later in the month. Immediately prior to beginning filming, several other key actors in the film had yet to sign on. According to Holland, the film needed all or none of the actors in order to be produced. Anyway, and now let's move on to the filming. <clears throat> Second unit filming occurred from October 14th to 16th in 2020, 2020 in New York City under the working title Serenity Now to capture visual effects, plates, and establishing shots. Film occurred in the Astoria, Sunnyside, and Long Island City neighborhoods in Queens. On October 23rd, filming, filming occurred in Greenwich Village in Manhattan. The production moved to Atlanta by October 25th the Holland, Badalon and Cynthia is joining for principal for principal photography after Holland finished shooting Sony's Uncharted two days earlier. Moro Fiori served as the cinematographer of the film, replacing Seamus McGarvey, who had to leave the production after contracting COVID-19. McGarvey also had a conflict with the film Cyrano following No Way Home's pandemic-caused production delay. His principal photography was scheduled was originally planned to start in July 2020. Shooting Atlanta occurred at 12th Studios, strict safety measure, with strict safety measures in place on sound stages to prevent exposure to COVID-19. To reduce interactions between cast and crew members on set during the pandemic, the production apparently relied on innovative new technology that scanned actors into a visual effects system that could apply makeup and costumes to actors during post-production. A light system was also in place to signal where the cast signal when the cast could take off their masks for filming and when masks would be required the cast and crew members to where while set was while set work was being done. Cumberbatch began shooting his scenes in Atlanta by late November, before beginning work on Doctor Strange and the Winter Fords of Madness, which began filming that month in London. The filming ran for seven to eight weeks under the working title Serenity Now and the November Project before a break during the 2020 Christmas season. By December 2020, Alfred Molina was set to reprise his role as Otto Octavius slash Doctor Octopus from Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2 
When Tobey Maguire was surprising, surprising his role as Peter Parker slash Spider-Man for a Raimi Spider-Man film trilogy, and Andrew Garfield returned as Peter Parker slash Spider-Man for Webb's The Amazing Spider-Man films. A cameo appearance of Maguire and Garfield alongside Holland as their respective Spider-Man had previously been considered for the Sony Pictures animation film Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, but was then cut because Sony had felt at that moment that it would be too risky and confusing. And that at the time, Claire reported that Maguire and Garfield would appear alongside the would appear in the film alongside Kristen Dunst as Mary Jane Watson from Raimi's Spider-Man from Raimi's Spider-Man film trilogy and Emma Stone's Gwen Stacy from the Amazing Spider-Man films. The first round of the script included other characters from the, from the Spider-Man and Amazing Spider-Man films. <clears throat> but writers felt that included that including too many characters would negatively affect the story. The rumors about returning actors led to speculation and commentary. With Richard Newby of The Hollywood Reporter believing that a crossover style film could lessen the impact of Sony's successful animated Into the Spider Verse film. <clears throat> His colleague Graham McGillan felt a Spider Verse crossover would allow Marvel to clean up some loose ends and fulfill some fan dreams in the process, especially if Marvel and Sony's negotiations meant that they wanted to separate Spider Man from the MCU. Slash films Hoi Trambui. Feared the film was becoming overcrowded and wished that Holland could lead the Spider-Man film without a bigger A-list star showing him the ropes. While Adam B. Very of Variety noted that these reports were not confirmed and questioned whether the returning actors would be making more cameo, more in the cameo appearances. Shortly after, Holland denied that McGuire and Garfield would appear in the film. Many of the actors from previous returning from previous Spider-Man films were brought to set in cloaks in order to help prevent their involvement in the film from leaking. Around Christmas 2020, McKenna Summers rewrote the introductions, wrote the introductions of McGuire and Garfield as well as much of third act in time for those actors to start filming. They had not been able to focus on those scenes earlier because they were busy during much of the first and second acts in the previous months. If I could confirm the film in December 2020, if I could confirm in, in, in December 2020 that the film would have connections to Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. A month later, he discussed the fact that the film's title had not yet been announced, an knowledge that it was being referred to, some, referred to by some as Spider-Man 3, and revealing that Marvel was referring, it, was referring to it as Homecoming 3 internally. Cox had shown material for the film by then, and a last photo indicated that the film would be set during the Christmas season. The film occurred at Frederick Douglass High School from January 22nd to, to 24th. The next month, Holland described it as the most ambitious standalone superhero film, and again denied the rumors that McGuire and Garfield would appear. Excuse me. At the end of February, the film's title was revealed to be Spider Man No Way Home, continuing the naming convention of the past two films featuring Home in the title. The film took place in Midtown High School from March 19th to 21st. The Atlanta public, public school system has stopped allowing buildings in the district to produce its film locations because of the COVID 19 pandemic. But give this film an exception since both the Frederick Douglass and Midtown schools were previously used as filming locations in Spider Man Homecoming. Hannibal Barrest was revealed to be reprising his role as gym teacher Coach Wilson, with Barrest releasing a music video in, in August 2021 revealing he had filmed scenes in Atlanta. Holland said No Way Home had more visceral fight sequences than the previous two films, with more hand to hand combat. Filming arrived on March 26, 2021. And now finally on to the post-production. In April 2021, Melina confirmed that he was appearing in the film, explaining, he had not been <coughs> explaining that he had not been told to talk about his role in the film during production because he realized that his appearance had been widely rumored and reported on. Later that month, J.B. Smoop revealed he was returning as Julius Stell from Far From Home, while Cox stated that he was not involved in the film. In early May, Garfield denied that he had been asked to appear in the film, Later said, never say never. Well, and Gory Rice was revealed to be returning as Betty Brandt. Later that month, Stone denied her involvement in the film. Sony Pictures Group President Stanford Panich acknowledged to me that there had been confusion and frustration from fans regarding the relationship between the SSU and the MCU, but stated that there was a plan to clarify this. He believed it was already getting a little more clear for people as to where we're headed at the time and added that that the release of No Way Home would reveal more of this plan. <coughs> Very commented that the apparent introduction of multiverse elements in No Way Home 
could be a well up would allow would allow Holland to appear in both the MCU and the SSU. The official trailer for No Way Home could further involvements of John Favreau's Harold Happy Hogan and Benedict Wong as Wong, reprising their roles from past MCU films, as well as J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson from Far From Home. Simmons previously played a different version of the character in the Raimi trilogy as well. It was also confirmed that the characters Electron Green Go and Green Goblin would appear in the film, the implication that this incarnation of Green Goblin would be Willem Dafoe's version from the Raimi films. In September 2021, Garfield again denied he was in the film, saying, quote, No matter what I say, it's either going to be really disappointing for people or it's going to be really exciting. Garfield later described his denials as rather stressful but also weirdly enjoyable. Come on. Okay, there we go. In early October, many commented, commentators expected Tom Hardy to price, to price his roles as Eddie Brooke and Venom from Venom and Venom Let There Be Carnage. After the Let There Be Carnage made credit scenes show the characters were being transported from their universe to the MCU. Feige said that there was a lot of coordination between Let There Be Carnage and No Way Home team between the Let There Be Carnage and No Way Home teams to create the scene, which, were, which was directed by Watts during the production of No Way Home. Hardy ultimately praised Brock in the film's mid credit scene, though there had to there had, though there have been discussions about integrating him into the film's final battle. Later that month, Empire's issue on No Way Home stated the film would include the return of Dr. Octopus, Electro, Defoe's Green Goblin, Thomas Hayden Church's Flint Marco slash Sandman from Raimi's Spider-Man 3, and Reese Evans' Kurt Connor slash Lizard from Webb's The Amazing Spider-Man. Once said these were still unconfirmed rumors and was in no hurry to confirm or deny appearances of, of the characters. Well, Vicky said the rumors were fun for fans, but audiences shouldn't expect them all to come true. The film's second trailer confirmed the involvement of Defoe, Church, and Ethan's. At the beginning of November, Jorge Lindenborg Jr. revealed he would be pressing a soul as Jason Ionello from Homecoming and Far From Home in a, in, a in a similar role to those films that have very, very little to do with the core story. <clears throat> By the middle of the month, additional photography had been completed for the film. That's going to serve knowing home as the culmination of the home of the homecoming trilogy. And Arian Moyat revealed he revealed that he had a role in the film. Dunn said she was not in the film, but would never say no to reprising her role of Mary Jane Watson. A teaser trailer for Doctor Strange and One to First of Madness was included at the end of the film as a post credit scene, before being released online shortly after No Way Home's theatrical release. Jeffrey Ford and Leigh Folsom Boyd served as the film's editors. The visual effects were, were provided by Cinesite, Clear Angle Studios, Crafty Apes, Digital Domain, Folks VFX, Framestore, Luma Pictures, Monsters, Aliens, Robots, Zombies, Mr. X, Perception, Secret Lab, <coughs> <coughs> Sony Pictures Image Works, and SS VFX. So overall, I really do enjoy this movie, and it's definitely my favorite uh, Spider-Man. It's definitely my favorite MCU Spider-Man movie, and while some of my favorite my favorite Spider-Man movie overall, that Sam Raimi's Sam Raimi Spider-Man Two, this one is just absolutely phenomenal, and it's probably my favorite MCU movie so far. But we'll see if that changes after I see Guards of the Galaxy Volume Three next weekend. So yeah. <laughs> so overall, I give Spider-Man No Way Home. Five Captain America shields out of five. Well, anyway, tune in more as we take a look at... What's the next one? Oh, yeah. As we take a look at Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So, until then, in the words of the late great Stan Lee, Excelsior!